while big move has come in from the center where as the center has moved to amend uh, the criminal law bills are being brought in to uh, amend the ipc crpc and the evidence act uh, we're speaking to senior advocate siddharth lutra in this regard uh, thank you so much for joining us today sir um sir a never seen before complete overhaul of the criminal laws uh, what's your first reaction how do you see this change i've read the indian penal the, the new version of the penal code i've read also the version of the procedural law i've glanced at the evidence act so i'll say this the penal code is interesting in its attempt to make it more concise to include provisions of corruption to include provision of organized crime and you know tweak with the provisions add things like snatching etc as also includes include provisions of um, terrorism but yet all it does it it recalls the old penal code it doesn't look into the uapa the existing organized crime laws as also the corruption laws which will have to be modified repealed and i'm sure that's what the legislature the standing committee will have to look at and recommend having said that uh, some of the provisions are interesting in terms of addition of community service which i think is a very important thing making a uh, rash and negligent act uh, adding increasing the punishment uh addition of uh, as i said organized crime the uh, modification of the existing sedition provisions and these are all important uh, changes that have been brought having there's also provision regarding fake news they've increased the punishment for defamation so by and large they've used the structures of the old penal code with some modification as recommended or suggested by the courts and law commissions perhaps but is it an overhaul perhaps not entirely is it an improvement hopefully yes but is there a lot to be done yes there is still a lot to be done speaking for myself what i would have envisaged as an overhaul which is essential now for the criminal justice administration in this country is to have all your central criminal laws in one code everything make it yeah. facile make it logical for the investigator make it logical for the practitioner and make it logical for the uh, judiciary similar with the criminal procedure law similar with the evidence act so we have a more uh, functional working system and every time a judge or a lawyer or a investigator is looking at an offense or a procedural aspect or an evidentiary aspect he or she does not have to look at three different kind of laws they could have made it you know they 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 talked that you know you could have changed the gender issue that he should not just include she but i think that is there is a rationale behind what they've done because that would have involved too much change all over the place yeah and uh, therefore i think there is uh, some there there are two steps forward no steps necessarily backward but many more steps to go now come to the procedural law that's an interesting thing one of the things is an affirmation of trial by electronic modes uh, there's an interesting role given to village headmen who must talk about informal absconders who must talk about uh, offenders and reporting so they've really been brought a lot more into the system this was happening under special laws but this needed to be done and this is uh, interesting and this is a kind of interface between uh, people's uh, bodies village administration which is exists in the subsidiary legislation such as the police rules or regulations in different states and that has been brought into four of the chokidari acts i'm surprised that uh, section 125 crpc the provisions on dowry sorry on maintenance have been maintained those should have been taken out of the code they are already there in various legislations we don't need to overburden the law and so far as the uh, statutory recording of electronic evidence is concerned well the statute recording of uh, i'm sorry the uh, of statute recording of uh, the electronic recording of fi is concerned that you've been allowed to file an fi today electronically and then sign it 3 days later but then the whole purpose is lost because the whole idea is to make it easy i do understand that that is not practical in a lot of cases though certain offenses we've tried that experiment in about eight states but i have my views on that because a lay person may not know the nature of the offense the information may be sketchy though serious offenses may have taken place so all these are things where there has to be a play in the joints discretion to the investigator 
as to yeah. when to invoke defense, when to do a preliminary inquiry. But that should have been regulated specifically by statute. One will have to examine it further to see how that plays out. The inherent powers had been retained as of the plea bargaining. And unfortunately, I would have liked it not just to be sentence bargaining, but actually the um, actually offense bargaining. That is to say, you can plead guilty not of X offense, let's say 302, but you can plead guilty of murder, but you can plead guilty for culpable homicide and undergo the sentence for that. So these are the kind of uh, forward-looking changes I had hoped for. But this is a bill which has been placed. It is going to the standing committee. And yeah. essentially, is it a break from the colonial past? Partly the illustrations and examples have gone, but a lot of the language is strikingly identical. And I'm not using the word similar specifically, is identical to what existed. For example, the definition of 299, culpable, yeah. you know, culpable homicide, and what is there in the old code, new code. So this is an issue which I think it was, and for example, and even for the example definition of rape, there's no real change between what was done in 2012-13 and now from the Criminal Law Amendment Act. So I think we, going forward, we must also test the existing provisions which have now been incorporated in this code and see how have they played out in the last decade. Illustratively, you know, you have this provision regarding uh, a victim in a molestation rape case, certain specific offenses must be heard before bail yeah. can be granted. Now, supposing the person doesn't appear. Yeah. Or by way of example, that a trial must be concluded in certain sexual offenses within 60 days. Now, the Supreme Court in Anoki Lal is seized of that issue, saying 60 days is impractical. Justice Lal, when he was a puny judge, before, on, before he became Chief Justice, had dealt with this case in Anoki Lal, where there was a trial done in 13 days and the man was given a death sentence. Supreme Court struck yeah. down the sentence. So these are issues which one will have to see how this new changed or uh, modified legislation works out. There has been touching up, there has been a kind of reorganization of the provisions. But is it as radical as it seems, perhaps somewhat in the IPC, but not necessarily elsewhere? Uh, so you've pretty much covered uh, everything. But so one uh, particular question about the offense of sedition. Now, uh, because the Supreme Court had kept that law in obedience, the law has been a subject of debate for a few years now. Center had told the court that they will re uh, revisit it. Now they have made yeah. changes to it. The new law effectively enhances Sorry, the offense. I, I lost you for a minute. Uh, so the center had told the court that they will revisit the offense, uh, the provision of sedition. Now they have done that, but the new law also effectively enhances uh, the offense with the punishment has been increased. The definition has been made broader. So how do you see the change that has been brought in the sedition law? So I think they've talked about, you know, they brought in the element of knowledge and intention and they've yeah. tried to tweak it to say that you know, they've tried to tweak it in line of the principle laid down in Kedarnath Singh. So they've made it more specific. Sedition as it existed, but for Kedarnath Singh judgment, had, uh, had was very vast. But these contours yeah. were already described in Kedarnath Singh's case. And... Uh, I don't think this will make the use of the new provision any less rampant. The question that really needs to be asked is, does sedition have any role in a democratic republic where we, the people, are sovereign? Sedition is a legislation meant for countries where there are rulers, sovereigns. We are a democratic republic. Are there any significant changes according to you brought into the rape laws? Because they've also added a provision in the proposed bill for sexual intercourse by uh, deceitful means. And so in addition to that, uh, they've also completely removed Section 377. Uh, would that mean that there's no law to protect men against sexual assault now in the penal court? I, I would believe that that is already covered under 375. Okay. So 375 already used the is fairly vast. In fact, once 375 was amended in 2013, I always felt that a lot of the other provisions have become redundant. There was no purpose in retaining them, including 377. So that's something which we will have to 
examine and see. Uh, having gone forward, as I said, some change, some improvement, some uh, comprehensive clubbing together of different provisions, some important changes, as I said, for example, the community uh, service. But speaking as a person who's concerned for rights of uh, individuals, both victims and the accused, and also the role of the state, speaking as a citizen and a, and a lawyer practicing on the criminal side, I believe there are miles to go before we sleep. So, but is it a favorable change uh, according to you? Do you think there was a need for three new bills for a new court? I think there's a need for a detailed relook. Uh, there's a need okay. for a detailed relook and putting all the various legislations in one place. So, to that extent, I, as I said, there are miles to go before we sleep. There's a lot more to be done. Is this adequate? Perhaps, at least speaking for myself, I had a lot more expectation. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to India today. Thank you.